For more than 20 years, Israel has been an important NATO partner and an active member of our Mediterranean dialogue. The only security forum that brings together NATO allies, Israel, and Arab countries. In the past few weeks, we have seen the NATO-Israel partnership in action. Uh, the British HMS Ocean, the flagship of one of NATO's maritime groups, trained with the Israeli Navy and Air Force in the Mediterranean. This followed a successful visit to Haifa. And last summer, Israel responded to a call for help from NATO's newest ally. Israel sent three aircraft to fight devastating forest fires in Montenegro. Israel's support is very much appreciated by NATO. The Alliance and Israel are now working more closely together than ever. In 2017, Israel established a mission at NATO headquarters so that it can further develop our cooperation. And this cooperation is very concrete. NATO and Israel work together on cyber defense, countering the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and in this framework in May 2019, at the NATO Maritime Interdiction Operational Training Center in Crete, the International Partners Outreach event will be organized by this in Israel. Countering improvised explosive devices, and of course, uh, overall fighting terrorism. This is good for NATO and good for Israel. NATO and Israel face grave and complex threats. It is vital that countries that share the same values of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law stand united against hate and against terrorism. And the security of the alliance is closely linked to the security of our region. For NATO, the Eastern Mediterranean is an area of strategic importance. Operation Sea Guardian provides situational awareness, counterterrorism surveillance, and security capacity building. NATO naval forces have also been active in the Aegean to support international efforts to cut lines of human trafficking and illegal immigration. Furthermore, bearing in mind the strategic importance of the Gulf region, NATO is reinforcing ties with the Gulf Cooperation Council, and our new hub for the South in Italy will help us gain deeper understanding of challenges coming from the Middle East and North Africa. As we continue to adapt in the face of evolving challenges, it is important to ensure that the NATO-Israel partnership continues to go from strength to strength. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, and uh, thank you, Ambassadors, for uh, uh, this lunch, which I always look forward to. It has come after a sleepless night in the Knesset, a successful sleepless night. We'll have another one on uh, Thursday when we pass the budget in the government. Uh, I've been through more arduous phases in my life, but uh, I appreciate the fact that you, bear, you bore the uh, slight uh, delay with uh, understanding and patience. Uh, Ambassador, you outlined uh, the great uh, cooperation between NATO and Israel. It's a natural one. NATO, is, uh, NATO was created one year after Israel. Uh, it's a unique alliance of democracies that share common values, committed to uh, the preservation of freedom, the protection and advancement of peace. Israel is such a democracy as well. It's the only such democracy in this region, and therefore our cooperation is uh, natural. It was somewhat overdue, and it uh, received a, a significant uh, uh, acceleration and flourishing following the uh, uh, opening of our office in the NATO headquarters in December of 2016. Um, beyond the many important areas that you outlined. Uh, there are two issues that I think I want to spell out for you, which I think are important uh, areas where Israel contributes to the security of every single NATO country. And they both have to do with radical Islam. The world right now is threatened by uh, radical Sunnis uh, led by initially by Al-Qaeda, now by Daesh, by ISIS, and radical Shiites led by Iran. When we talk about ISIS, it's important to understand that Israel helps Europe in two fundamental ways. The first is that we have, through our intelligence services, have provided uh, information that has stopped uh, several dozen major terrorist attacks, many of them in European countries. Some of these could have been mass attacks of the worst kind that you have experienced on the soil of Europe, uh, and even worse. 
because they involve civil aviation. Israel has prevented that, and thereby helped save many European lives. The second uh, uh, assistance that Israel has given uh, to uh, uh, Europe and NATO has been the prevention of the establishment of what I call ISIS West in the Sinai. Um, there is, uh, as ISIS is contracting uh, and is being destroyed in Iraq and Syria, it is trying to establish an alternative territorial base in the Sinai. Um, Israel is contributing to preventing that in myriad ways. And in general, I would say that Israel is the most powerful indigenous force, indigenous force in the Middle East that fights uh, uh, radical Islam. Now to the second stream of radical Islam. That's Iran. Why is Iran so dangerous? Uh, because it is, as Kissinger said, a cause, not a country. And the cause is uh, worldwide domination under their brand of uh, Islamic militancy. Uh, we are the small Satan. You're, no offense, the middle-sized Satan. America is the great Satan. But uh, they have designs on all of us. Uh, Iran is dangerous because this radical ideology seeks to acquire nuclear weapons. The first task is to prevent them from acquiring nuclear weapons. We can talk about that over lunch. The second reason they're so dangerous is because they're trying to establish an empire, a territorial empire, from uh, Tartus to, uh, or rather from Tehran to Tartus in the Mediterranean, enveloping the Middle East also from the south through Yemen. Uh, eventually conquering the Middle East. This is what Iran is about. We are absolutely committed to preventing Iran from forming such a base, a military base, uh, in Syria. And we back our words with action. Uh, and this is dangerous for you, too, because the conquest of the Middle East by Iran would eventually uh, affect all of your interests. Here's the third and specific interest that you should be concerned with. As part of Iran's plans of conquest and colonization of Syria, they want to bring in as many as 100,000 Shiites, Shiite fighters imported into Iran, not Iranians, under Iranian command. If you think you had a reaction to uh, ISIS, that is to radical uh, Islam, radical uh, uh, Sunni Islam, this is what really is happening in Syria. This is correct. So half a million were butchered. Uh, millions were uprooted from their homes, and millions went to Europe. They didn't go anywhere else. They just went to Europe. And that may be about to end. One hopes. This tragedy, I hope, ends. But if Iran realizes its goal of bringing in 100,000, 100,000 uh, Shiite fighters into Iran, this will reignite the same conflict, and you'll have uh, the son of uh, ISIS and the grandson of Al-Qaeda that will be uh, uh, fighting uh, this new Shiite force. Where will the spillover happen? In Europe. Where will the human flow go? To Europe. Who's preventing that right now? Israel. Right now, Israel alone. But I maintain that this is a common interest that we have in NATO. So my message to you today is radical Islam, either Shiite, or Sunni, threatens all of us. Israel is fighting both. Israel seeks your cooperation. You have a statement and a slogan in NATO, which I think is particularly apt. An attack on one is an attack on all. An attack by radical Islam, from whichever direction, on any of our democracies is an attack on all our democracies. This is not merely a statement of abstract principle. This is simple truth. So I uh, submit to you that what we should do is increase our cooperation for our common interest, our common security, and for the quest for peace. Thank you. We have uh, a longstanding policy to uh, prevent the uh, transfer of uh, game-changing weapons to Hezbollah from the Syrian territory. Uh, this policy uh, has not changed. We back it up as necessary uh, with action. Thank you.